Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. My camera is quite full. I only have 20 minutes of recording time. Um, So I wanted to go through uh, some of my magazine collection uh, to look at more black and white art. Inktober, we've got to do this. These books are awesome. So I grabbed like some Savage Sword of Conan's, Eerie, Creepy, Zombie, Conan Saga, Savage Sword. There's um even uh, like Tales of the Zombie, Creepy, oh, and Vampirella. It's all kinds of stuff, but this is such a small portion of what I have. But um, I, the one thing I'll say is most of these magazines, well, all of them, in fact, uh, I look through at the store. So when I was buying them, like this one was 12 bucks. It must have had something special or it was um, maybe, oh, this is the Nino issue. We looked at this. This one's really good. This is that Alex Nino issue that was sort of towards the back end of that other video. But um. Yeah, so what I would do is um, when I go to a comic book store, even a comic book convention, if I find a box of these, I'll just kind of like sit on the floor or stand there and go through them. And generally, I'll just ask, I'll say, hey, do you mind if I pop them open and just kind of check out the art inside? And then I grab the ones that the art appeals to me. And you can get some really, really good surprises in these type of magazines. So I grab like 20. We're only going to go through like probably three or four today. But um, let me pause this for a second. I'm going to pop these out of the bag and we can um, flip through some. And, and what's great about these two is they're going to look good because they're on newsprint and not reprints where they try to clean them up. I It just never looks as good. So hold on one moment. Okay, I'm back. So I popped open. This is Savage Sword of Conan number 10. Uh, original cover price was a buck back in the days of yore. Um, Boris cover. And uh, of course, I swear, like whenever I start a video, it's either planes, helicopters, or dogs barking. So there's a dog barking in the background. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it. Ooh, this is nice. So this is trippy because this looks like Barry Windsor Smith to me, but the signature is different. And the Conan Saga magazines, they were actually released in the 90s. Man, that's a wild background. It looks like airbrush. Um, <laughs> God, that is so Barry Windsor Smith. F, what is the signature? Am I tripping? What does that say? TNC frontispiece. piece. Oh, Tim Conrad. So this is a Tim Conrad piece. Look, here's a bit of advice. Always sign your name clearly. <laughs> you want people to know it's your work. This, this might be why Tim slipped through the cracks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. But this is really, really a great drawing, man. It's very, very Windsor Smith. Uh, and I actually have the Red Nail Saga in the magazine format somewhere. I was I was kind of hoping I would at least find one of those, but I, I didn't come across them. I have a box of magazines, uh, maybe a, a two long boxes. So there's quite a few. So this is going to be Buscema. So, uh, sorry, but I just got a text. My car is in the shop right now, and I'm getting updates as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is nice. I, I, don't, I suppose Buscema could have inked this. I, I'm not. I, I, I love John Buscema's stuff, but I'm definitely not an expert on his career. And and like, all all I kind of know is what I've cobbled together. Um, you know, o over just collecting his stuff, but I don't know a lot of the history of it and circumstance and that's kind of sometimes sort of the fun thing i'll tell you what though one of the magazines that i have is alfredo ocala inking him and it is off the charts we're definitely going to do that um but yeah let me know if you think this is busema inking himself or or ernie chan chua you know i'm not 100 percent sure i know busema is a real good inker We'll kind of hustle, because like I said, my camera's got limited space on it right now. I've got a bunch of videos on it. Um, and, and again, the reason that we're, we're sort of, well, not only because of Inktober, but I'm going to be doing a Conan review tomorrow morning, and uh, I want... Um I want to have this stuff fresh in my mind of what, what really captures the spirit of storytelling in a Conan-type um, magazine, and... Uh, the best way to do it is to look at the art, you know, the different things that went on in Conan. And as we saw in the first video, there was quite a bit of variety. I mean, the Gil Kane was so different than um, the Alex Nino, as a, for instance. And, you know, you can just keep plugging in names and how each different artist sort of handled mass is so cool. 
No fighting. No fighting. I'm telling you guys. I know I'm on YouTube, but seriously, if they're going to fight, I can already tell. They're fighting over sunshine. <laughs> it's like the morning, and there's like a good spot of sun, so they both want to lay in it. This is what cats do. Are you guys going to be cool? Or not? You're ruining my video. So, okay. Some nice detail in there. This is interesting. I wonder if this is Busema, Inky Busema. Man, his women are so distinct and his men's faces are like so on point. The way he draws legs, too. That's nice. God, I love, man, he's such a good draftsman. When I say draftsman, it just means sort of like like his overall ability to draw is is just really, really solid. Like he can suggest stuff, he can refine stuff, he can kind of bob and weave. Like if he was a boxer, like he's got all the skills. Like everything is there. And then he can he can really navigate it and put on the gas pedal and really amp up the detail. If he wants to lay back and kind of let it like not cruise control but you know what I mean like like he's he's like pretty much in complete control of like his artistic delivery and and he has his language down and when, what I mean by language is he knows how he wants to draw stuff and and it, you know it would be fascinating I mean I think that any artist like if you asked him well, it would be difficult to say if you asked him specifically but most artists I think still always want to learn more so even probably at his level like he he may have believed that he had things that he should work on it's not completely out of the question but but uh you know generally speaking there's a point where you're a professional you know you've you've gotten the skills you've gotten the miles you've done you've the you know the experiences there and uh you know you're able to do your 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 job and and really kind of flex your muscles and and get creative with it and do all these things and it it just kind of flows out of you like i never when i'm sitting and inking i i probably am thinking of things and i'm problem solving but it doesn't really feel like it they're just more strategies to do awesome you know <laughs> it's going to be my art book strategies to do awesome art technique book but uh yeah you know you learn all this stuff so that you can kind of just forget it. <laughs> it, it's like you know there's some simple examples that i've seen not referring to art but i think that they work but it's it's not like you don't sit and try to figure out how to compose a sentence when you speak if you're gonna say the alphabet it's like you just rattle it off a b c d e you know what i mean they're there and, and they're chunks a isn't it like it's like we know that there's individual letters a b c d but but basically a through e is almost kind of one thing it's the same thing like when Busema draws a face like that's a through e he just throws it down boom 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 he knows the five pieces that make a face that, that are going to make his face then he picks a rendering you know g h i whatever and then and then he uh a light source and and he's he's gone through the alphabet of how to draw a face and he didn't really have to like sweat it. And that's what I want for you. <laughs> that's what I want for all of us. <laughs> Looking at good stuff definitely helps. You don't realize how much you're absorbing, how much you're learning from this. And then just one day you have to draw something and you already kind of know it. You just go, oh yeah, you know, like I could do this. And, and it, you may like i i find it's weird because i have a really really good visual memory but even with that i tend to remember things better than they are so like a panel like this like i might remember this but but if a year from now i'm trying to pull up sort of a shot like this and i think of this it'll even be more insane i'll have thrown in a couple of characters maybe the wizard isn't standing upright and uh it's really trippy. And, and I have to say, honestly, over the last year, things have changed a lot for me. It's really, really interesting when you work on your art hard and then you start looking at other art and looking at your own art and, and you really see it in a different light. And it's been pretty interesting because it's, it's like, 
it's different. It really is different. And it's cool. I mean, it's it's like, you know, and you'll experience it too if you stick with it long enough, but you have to be driven. I'm pretty driven. <laughs> driven. All right, so let's pause this and we're going to go to another magazine. Okay. This one is really, really good. This is the Alfredo Alcala inks on them. So this is Savage Sword of Conan number seven. Again, that dollar cover price. This is a nice Boris cover, honestly. Boris gets a weird rap. Like, like I get that as his work evolved, it probably got a little more, um, you know, where it was looking heavily photo referenced. But, dude, I mean, good luck painting something as good as this. I, I, you know what? Buy the paints and show me that you can do something at this level. <laughs> Then you can talk shit about Boris. So the guy's really talented. Just I think his aesthetic sort of shifted to to a thing that that probably isn't as uh, exciting. But yeah, they people trot him out like like what not to do. I mean, it's like come on, man. Seriously, he's talented. Just let it go. <laughs> it's not like I have like fifty million Boris books. I'm just trying to get paid. So this is a call on on. Buscemin. This stuff is just literally a work of art every page. It really is. Akala, man, the, uh, he is the hardest working inker I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like he took the Bernie Wrights and Frankenstein and just went like, I could do pages like that. Why not? And you know what? This is a good example. I was saying how difficult it is when you do really, really linear work to um, really handle human figures. It can it can go awry quite easily because just it can start to look brittle and kind of weird. And uh, Akal is a guy that actually figured it out uh, and, and does it quite nicely. Sorry, I'm having trouble turning the page and I don't want to bend it. So it's like like I said, that's why sometimes the digital files are a little easier to handle. It's like, I like that I can zoom in on the magazine and actually get the um, the effect, but man, I mean, this is like, this would take so long. Look at that. And it's, it's really worth a more in-depth study down the road. We'll come back to all this stuff because this is some really good stuff. I'm actually really, this is the first time I've ever actually even participated in an Inktober even acknowledging it, honestly, it's like, like the first few years, I was just kind of like, whatever, <laughs> not hating on it, but, but, uh, it's just, it's, it's like, okay. So it's like something, it's like, I don't get that excited about like, you know, so-and-so day, you know, like superheroes have sort of like special days now. So, uh, you know, an event like Inktober to me is just kind of like, it's like, should always be working on your art. But anyway, um, but, but, uh, yeah, so it's, it's like, I, I like the idea of really presenting a lot of black and white art and, and, and showing really, really great stuff. And next year I'm actually going to do Inktober. I'm actually going to draw all the pieces. So I just, I wanted to do it this year, but I'm, I'm working on two books at once. It's just impossible. Well, I'm working on three books at once because I'm working on Blaster Kid and inking two books. It's just kind of one of those things because one of the books that I'm inking isn't a monthly. It's they're 16 page Batman stories. So, you know what I mean? It's like, but that's not enough work to really like that is so kick ass. Um, and look at this panel. I mean, this could have been out of like a history book or something. And this is a long story. I mean, it is just absolutely incredible what this guy does. And so again, and and if anyone knows like like Alcala's process, I would be curious to know anything about him if there's ever been a little documentary or interviews. But man, look at that. And it's interesting because I can see like a little bit of Zafino and even his son um in in some of this. It's probably just more incidental, but um look at that. Yeah, it's so wild. Those heavy blacks that John's able to spot on faces really, really look cool. And again, if we saw curtains that were similar to this in one of the other issues from the other video. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see more. Look at that panel. I mean, it is just... Wow. That is so cool. And, uh, dude, I'm telling you, like, the uh, eerie? Is it eerie? 
the eerie issue I have is ridiculous. It is so good. I don't think we're going to have time. I think we should just stick with, we'll stick with Conan for this issue. I'll only label it as a Conan book, but um, I think 20 minutes will be good on this. And then we'll do eerie um, after I do that review of the guy's Conan stuff. I might, maybe I'll edit this. Man. Look at that. That is crazy. Very Franklin Booth, but again, it just sometimes the stuff is more because the technique reminds you of him. It's not not to say that he was like trying to do Franklin Booth, but you have this many lines on a page, it's going to remind you of little things. Look at this story; it is absolutely nuts. I'm just showing you the full read of the page, so you can kind of get an idea of what is going on. These pages had to take at least three days. There's no way. Look at this. I love this. Man, the characterization. I mean, like, that guy looks so cool. And then the dude in the background is just so classic, like, comic book. Look at Conan right here. But yeah, this is kind of like when when I was doing the other video, I was kind of remembering Conan Magazine is more like this. But after I shot the video, I kind of realized that it's my collection of Conan Magazines in black and white tends to lean more this way. You know what I mean? When I was flipping through the magazines, trying to cherry pick what I thought would be fun to look at multiple times, I was leaning more towards this. Like there was more bang for your buck. <laughs> <laughs> literally um this is really cool so uh yeah that was why i think i was i was struggling so hard is because i kept flipping through magazines and i was like this isn't what i remember this is like kind of more open and just looks like regular comic book art which isn't there's nothing wrong with that but i wanted i wanted to show stuff that was gonna freak freak us out <laughs> Actually, what I might do, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'll just give you a teaser of that creepy issue. It'll be a cliffhanger at the end of this video. God dang. Look at this panel. I mean, his loincloth is nuts. Whatever that thing is. The loincloth, what do they call that? His crotchular short... <laughs> just kidding. Um, man, that's such sick rendering on his leg. Oh my god. Look at that. Uh, so we got a minute and a half left. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. And what's crazy is there's a freaking dinosaur on this page. What is going on? This is full primal. Love the lighting on that dinosaur. Wow, that is really cool. His tail. Wow. Okay, I'm going to pause it here and we're going to hop. We'll come back to this. Don't worry. I got your back. Man, this is so sick. Okay, hold on. We're going to just peek at the creepy. Sorry, this one is eerie. I've got creepy over here too. But yeah, you know, go to your local comic book store and uh, tell them. Say, where are your magazines? Richard Friend told me to come and check them out. I'm going to buy some. All right, where do you see this? This is so sick. This magazine is so good. Look at this opening panel. Night of the Jackass. It's a crazy name for it, but that is just such a kick-ass drawing. Look at that. I want to go into that village. This is what I'm talking about. The mystery of comics. Suggesting stuff. not oh, Having detail, but leaving mystery. You have to have mystery. Without mystery, it's history. No, I don't know. Um, look at that. It's cool. These guys are so good. Uh, who is the artist on the story? Oh, I know his name too, darn it. Who is it? We're going to run out of room, and I'm not going to know. It's, uh... Come on. Say the name. God dang it. Hey, okay. Uh, now let's take a look at this eerie issue. Um, My camera was running out of space. I had quite a few uh, videos and stuff on it, and uh, 
I wanted to give this the proper attention that it deserves. So the editing might be kind of crappy. I'm trying to finish a lot of stuff today. It's a busy day. And then again, like I mentioned, uh, tomorrow I'll be doing a review for a patron. And uh, he was nice enough to want to share it on YouTube. So uh, this stuff kind of leads into it because it's a combination of... Um, you know, that the Conan style and some of this black and white. So this is a really cool, uh, Bernie writes and, um, like ad in this, these books are great though, but like, check out the talent list just in this one magazine. You've got Richard Corbin, Isidro Monet, Monez, Paul Neary, Jose Ortiz, Leopold Sanchez, Bernie writes and Wally Wood. It's crazy. Um, Ken Kelly cover, but uh, yeah, I wanted to show you this first story. We won't go through this whole magazine today, but man, this first story is awesome. And I, I'm under the impression that it would be uh, probably um, the uh, Isidro Monez. It's a little difficult to read his uh, signature, but anyway, beautiful, beautiful opening page on this. Um, it's just so cool. It's so, so neat. Hey, these magazines are so awesome. It's funny because when I do videos like this, it's like I immediately get greedy and I'm like, oh man, I need to get more. It's like I kind of recommend both ways. It's like you can buy them and just kind of do like blind buys on them if you can get a good deal and just sort of be surprised by what you get. Check this out. This is so sick. Um, but, but the reality is, is the magazines that I have are cherry picked from large boxes of them, you know, where it's like, I spent, you know, an hour <laughs> going through, you know, a bunch of different issues and then finding ones that I could afford at the time and, and buying the best ones, you know, like if they're all a dollar, then just go for it. I mean, you really can't go wrong, but if, if the cover price is 10 or 12 bucks and you're going to need to be more <laughs> selective on what, what ones you grab, but this guy is great, man. He's such a good artist and the Vampirella magazines are great too. And I'm curious to see that zombie magazine, why I got it. I haven't looked at it in a long time, man, that is just great art. Uh, but you can see how this would be so influential to, a lot of the artists, uh, you know, you figure this has probably come out in the seventies. So all the artists from the eighties probably not only supplementing their, uh, Marvel and DC comic books that they bought and whatever else, but you know, if you were, if you were edge Lord, we're looking for something a little bit more insane. You probably were heading in this direction, and I know just based on the reaction that I got from that first video that a lot of people were um, that that actually experienced this sort of era of comics. It's it's really really great art, and and uh, it's it's interesting because someone had asked me last night. Oh, and I'll, I'll plug uh, Dan Fraga Couch Doodles um, is is doing live streams every night on YouTube. I've caught two of them, but uh, they're really fun and really interesting. But uh, yeah, someone on the stream had asked me, they're like, you know, kind of like why, why I don't draw comics or, or why I'm not like working for a company or like I should do a horror comic. You know, I mean, honestly, that was what I was ramping up to do. And it just didn't really feel like there was an avenue to do it. Unfortunately, I hit a lot of brick walls. I would show people my stuff and uh, it just ended up being a lot of dead ends, honestly. And even this past Comic-Con, um, you know, another kind of incident like that happened where they approached me, but it doesn't really matter because I'm doing my own stuff now. Like I mentioned before, I'm working on Blaster Kid and, uh, that's kind of what I, that's what I'm passionate about. That's what I want to do. And, and, uh, I have a lot of stories to tell with that character. So it'll be cool, you know, and something that I'm looking forward to, you know, getting out. So probably was all meant to happen for a reason. And, and, you know, sometimes those obstacles end up making you, uh, better, you know? So look at it as a positive thing. It just wasn't meant to be. If you look at my comic book career, trust me, there was no doubt in the universe's mind that this is what I, what, what it wanted me to do for a certain period of time. There was way too many coincidences and things that just threw me into comic books. So, um, you know, I undoubtedly ended up where I should have been. And it's like, 
I have to believe that the rest of my career is is leading in that same direction. There's even other stuff that I really can't talk about yet. So it's all good. I love these these group fight scenes. They're some of my favorite like uh, kind of drawings. I just think they're so cool. This is great too. I actually, it's funny because I'm I'm a, a big Richard Corbin fan, but I don't have a great Richard Corbin collection. But I have sprinkles of Corbin, uh, and uh, there's some Corbin in here, and I'm assuming it's going to be color work. Um, but uh, yeah, it's tough to find and accumulate his stuff. You you really need like a checklist, and then just sort of hunt down uh, specific issues, you know, where you can find them. Um, I really like this guy's art, though. This this guy's really really good. He would do a kick-ass issue of Spawn. <laughs> it's funny because the magazine's like ripped. They're, like every page has a rip right there. I don't know what happened. Someone got a butcher knife and <laughs> tried to kill it. Um, sorry about that. And... Yeah, so let's go... I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. This looks good, but I want to see... Um... This is nice. What is that? My cat was very upset. Didn't want me to skip ahead. She said, no, Rich, no. Don't do it. You know, this looks like the rights and stuff. I didn't realize. I thought, I thought it was going to be spread out in a different way. So fun, and it's cool because I mean, you could actually like the because they're short stories. I mean, you can kind of hop in and out on a lot of these. I mean, some may have a little bit of uh, ongoing. Um, I think the Conan stuff sometimes are, are like each story uh, is actually one story. I got the, the impression that some of them are uh, set up that way. These monsters are so cool. Kevin Nolan was heavily, heavily influenced by this type of lighting. Um, I don't know if he necessarily got it from Wrights and. But uh, that's pretty iconic, like Kevin Nolan approach to some of his light lighting. But again, this is good stuff to soak in before I do this review because although the, his pages are Conan, um, it's it's the influence is kind of the same era, plus contemporary stuff too. But it's always good for me to cover a lot of ground because. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm a fan of this stuff, but by no means any kind of expert. Uh, okay, so let me, I'm going to pause this for a second and then uh, find a another story with Conan Saga. I'm pretty sure this is a Buscema one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Buscema and Tony de Zuniga. De Zuniga. <laughs> this is really nice. Powerful. The monster, he's like, wow, wow, why are you, why are you riding a horse by me? That's not cool. Look at that. That is a nice little spot illustration. It's probably a panel from the book, but man, that is kick ass. Okay. Oh yeah, this is good. I remember this issue. This is cool. I love the faces. They're so powerful, man. These figures, nice splash page. Bam. The ghouls of Yana Idar. I like they have the map, too. I think that kind of stuff is fun. <laughs> Classic. The hand pointing. Gesturing you to split. Really cool. Man, it's crazy how, like, open it is. You see all the lines are, like, a lot of them aren't connected. It's really cool. See, and again, that open panel thing that they do, it's a real trademark of this sort of this style. The stuff just kind of spills off into the page. Really, really nice. I think it's it's a cool effect. These magazines are hard to turn. I always feel bad because I have to like 
put the camera at some kind of crazy angle to do it. That's really cool. Man, that's such a nice little drawing. That's cool. He is such great bad guys. Conan is none too impressed. Boom. And it's actually a nice beat, so check this out. So it's a pause, so he's got a frame around Conan. Open panel. S some stuff is going to start to go down. As soon as the fight happens, he actually removes the panel borders completely on that particular shot. This guy's breaking the panel border. Really exciting. Got this great little shot with the zip -a tone kind of thing behind it. Really nice little sequence. And then again, panel borders sort of fall off, except for a little bit of like framing around the bottom of it. You see on that side. It's interesting. I almost wish that that guy's arm kind of was hanging out. Uh, the guy that's sort of to the right of the sword, this dude. It would have been fun to have his, his arm just kind of break go, going like full bleed. Love the shadows on the figures. It really, really gives it um, a, a simplicity that's very pleasing to the eye. And I know where to look because the blacks are sort of directing my eye. There's there's very attractive shapes. There's no doubt that everything is sending you to Conan. I mean, it's like it all just goes right there. It's really, really well done. Oh, man, that is so nice. God. I'm telling you, this is the good stuff. I was I I have a lot of these magazines. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, although, again, this is sort of like a... a I'm recording this like 90 minutes after the first part of the video because, I honestly, my camera was almost out of uh, batteries, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really, really took my time and picked what I thought were the best magazines Anytime I would go through lots of these. So my recollection of just the magazines in general, that they're all like just five star off the charts and, and some are good, but not excellent, you know, and it's different artists and it's just different styles and, you know, you, everyone has different tastes too. So, so maybe some of the ones that wouldn't be as um, appealing to me would, would knock someone else's socks off. So you never, this is great stuff, sorry. God, this is such a great issue. This is like perfect comic book art. There's many versions of perfect comic art, to be clear. I'm not saying this is the only one, but I'm saying like in this world, this is really, really good. And it's so it's so interesting to look at and exciting. And then just expertly done. They make a great team, man. It's just it's absolutely insane how fun it is to see Buscema Inc. by all these different guys. He's like the rock, you know? Not the actor. <laughs> but but the foundation of, of Buscema... Oh, sorry, I'm going to set the phone down for one sec while I switch the page. The pages are like... The magazine is like tilted. Like the pages all are going the opposite way that would be easy to grab. <laughs> That's so good. This would be good stuff to study. Like Buscema, when he's he's at this level of detail, it's a little more readable, and there's a little more of, um, uh, I think s something tangible that you can grasp. Some of those really hyper rendered, or when they do the washes, can get it can get pretty insane and a little a little complex. It's really good. Grab the paper. Yeah. I love this. The shot right here is really good. Supposedly, what the the patron was telling me is, I think that that Conan outside of the United States right now is actually public domain. I could be mistaken on that. Don't quote me on that. But um, so you can actually do Conan books, and it's okay. You might want to look into that. I'm not a lawyer, and I cannot give legal advice on the YouTube. But <laughs> this is what I heard. I heard heard it from a friend. <laughs> so the H.P. Lovecraft. Some of that stuff is public domain. Oh, 
Okay, I'm about to wrap this up, but this is really, really good. But I don't want this video to be too long. But anyway, this will be a great lead-in, and, and will give us a fun... Um, uh, I may even pull out one of these magazines so we can kind of compare and contrast when I do his review. Because uh, he's a he actually draws figures really, really well. But I think that, that there's some really good stuff that we can take from this experience of these... Uh, Busema and just everyone else that we've seen in these magazines like their work. So this should be a fun video to check out. And again, happy Inktober. I hope everyone's drawing and uh, I'm finishing a page right now and then I've got to start another page and hope, hopefully finish it. And then tonight I will be drawing my own stuff and, and uh, that's how my days go. They're quite full. Okay. Have a great one, everyone. Rawr. Look at that. That's so cool. Dude, that is just insane. We'll end it on that. You're gonna draw. You're gonna draw Frank Tober. <laughs> right, bye.